Hi, this is John at Airborne Innovations. I wanted to give you a little demo of the configuration required to get both SBUS and uh, autopilot data flowing through the to the uh, Pixhawk avionics. So first of all, we have a base station set up here. So we have base station, we have our SBUS to serial module connected to the RS-232 level converter, and that's connected to an RC receiver. Uh, so the SBUS is currently just powered up through USB. And uh, on the airborne side, we have a Pico radio, which is connected to a Pixhawk by a straight through serial cable. Uh, just three wire serial cable. We have the uh, serial to SBUS module. So the so first of all, the Pixhawk is connected to J6. The uh, serial uh, SBUS serial to SBUS module is connected to uh, J5 with the output of that connected to the Pixhawk RCN port. So the uh, ground wire is on on uh, top in this case and uh, signal on the bottom in that orientation and uh, of course a fan for P the Pico radio and a uh, an antenna and so the configuration on the radios so we have the base station radio here uh, the uh, serial serial uh, configuration is this is uh, to uh, transmit the SBUS data through. It's set to 115K baud. Uh, in this case, we have it set to UDP point to point. And uh, the remote IP address is pointing at the airborne radio, which in this case is 192.168.168.1. The remote port 20,002 and listening port 20,002. And uh, so the on the uh, airborne side, the first of all, the uh, uh, the primary serial port, which is uh, J5, which is connected to the SBUS module, is is set to 115 200 baud, 115 k baud. Also set for UDP point to point. This remote IP address points to the base station. And again, same same ports, 20,002 for remote port and listening port. So that should get you connected uh, with SBUS. And then the, uh, the secondary serial port is what we have con connected to the Pixhawk telemetry, to the Mavlink data. Uh, the default baud rate for that on the Pixhawk is 57,600. Here we have it set up as a TCP server on uh, listening port 20,003 which is a different port and the uh, uh, that that should be sufficient so on the uh, so let's just confirm real quick that we have mission planner working so starting up mission planner so in this case we're going to use TCP mode and we're going to click on connect uh, we have the IP address of the airborne unit entered here, which is 192.168.168.1. Click OK. The remote port 20003. And we click on OK. And see all the uh, autopilot telemetry start to go through. So now, the, uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is the default status of the the LEDs on the SBUS module. So on the base station module, we have one flash. Uh, every uh, couple of seconds or every second and then on the airborne SBUS module we have quick two flashes in the same period and that is the default data that indicates that no data is flowing uh, and so the if I now uh, start my Tyrannus radio power that up we should see welcome to open TX we should see data start to flow once that connection uh, is established. So there we go. We get, we're getting a quick flash on the base station side, which indicates that the SBUS data is being received. 
and uh, of course it's being transmitted through the serial lines and then we see on the airborne side that we're receiving that SBUS data the uh, the LED starts flashing uh, it is uh, a little bit irregular but it's uh, basically a divided rate of the rate that it's receiving and so uh, then on if we go back to the to mission planner we can go to uh, let's get rid of this menu let's go to initial setup mandatory hardware radio calibration and then we can see the the uh, stick configuration so i can see so we have roll we have pitch we have throttle and yaw all working so i did want to comment a little bit on the wiring setup for the sbus modules it's important to remember that the diagrams in the sbus manual indicate the uh, direction of data out of the SBUS module. So for instance, the, uh, so uh, on the uh, SBUS2 serial module, the, uh, the output of the SBUS module uh, is serial data. So it has a serial TX. So that needs to be connected to the serial RX of the radio. Uh, so just be careful when you're connecting those up. Similarly, on the airborne side, the uh, serial RX of the SBUS module needs to be connected to the serial TX of the radio. And uh, really, that's, that's uh, the most important thing. And uh, hopefully, you'll get all those connections going. Uh, on the, uh, the serial cable for the... Uh, uh, Pico Radio to Pixhawk. Again, those are all uh, straight through connections. So in this case, uh, you'll notice that the 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 uh, uh, you'll have basically pins two, three, and six connected to pins two, three, and six on each side. And if you take a look at our pinouts, you will see that the serial TX and the serial RX are reversed from the on the Pico Radio from the Pixhawk pinout, so that you can do that straight through cable. Uh, so, but they are marked, uh, so you should still connect serial TX to serial RX and RX to TX. Uh, so uh, that just happens to be a straight through cable. All right, uh, hopefully that will get you going and uh, good luck, thanks. I didn't get a chance to record it, but I also wanted to mention that the Tyrannus radio should be set up for D16 S bus mode. I'll link to another video in the comments that shows you how to do this. Thanks again.